What a week, because you had the president traveling overseas. He did NATO, then, uh, of course, went to the U.K. to meet with Theresa May, and he's on his way to be meeting uh, Vladimir Putin in, in Helsinki. Let's talk about all of this and the trade issues that certainly came up in the NATO meeting. You feel that this has been a misunderstood issue. Well, to some degree, I think people don't understand, you know, what, what is going on. And for investors, it's extremely confusing. So let's, let's divide it up. What is the purpose of having a trade war? It's obviously to change the way you know, trade is, uh, is actually um, uh, done in a way that favors the U.S. And what are we concerned about? Intellectual property rights, software rights, and, and things like that. But what happens in terms of its economic impact is far different. And what people underestimate is the degree to which this trade war could affect U.S. companies' earnings. Uh, economists always talk about the impact on GDP. And you can imagine a full-blown trade war reducing GDP by one half of one percent or six cents of one percent. But the real story is that you could ultimately have a hundred billion dollars in reduction in earnings in the U.S. if you had a full-blown trade war for a year, let's say, and that would be 10 percent of sort of large cap earnings in the United States. So we're talking about a very significant issue for investors. But I feel like this market has been giving this president and this administration some leeway. They believe he's negotiating because if not, I feel like this market would be way down if they didn't actually trust that, that at the end of the day we will probably get a better outcome. I think that is somewhat true. That's certainly not true in China. It's not true in the emerging right. markets. It's not true in you know the, no, the automobile but in the US, industry. The US but if you right look now. at the U.S. aggregate indices, I think that 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 is true. Um, and, and so, therefore, you know, what do you you know what do you make of that? Well. The question is, are we actively negotiating? And, and there's mixed evidence to that impact right now. You've seen articles come out this week uh, about the fact that there aren't active negotiations that are going on right now. The president told me uh, two weeks ago when I sat down with him in my exclusive interview that lots of countries are calling. He said, you don't know this, but lots of countries are calling and they want to do a trade deal. But I agree with you. At some point, we've got to see those trade deals on the books. He's got to get a deal done um, in order for the uncertainty to go away. Is that one of the big issues that you focused on in terms of how to invest right now? Right. I mean, you know, at City Private Bank, when we put out our mid-year outlook, we really looked at two, you know, contradictory trends. One is incredibly strong U.S. earnings and good earnings in, in Europe and in Asia as well. That's the positive. The negative is the impact that trade war, a trade war could have on portfolios and investor confidence, and then over the longer term on actual investment by corporations. And we see that as potentially significant, and we're beginning to see signs of weakening already, you know, in terms of commitments that CEOs are willing to make uh, on investing. Let's talk about earnings. The earnings season for the second quarter kicked off this past week. On Friday, we got J.P. Morgan, which was above expectations. Wells Fargo missed. Uh, PNC was better than expected, but I believe City, well, City, obviously, you're from City, so we won't go there. But in terms of the overall earnings period, how would you characterize it? Um, I think it's going to surprise people a little bit to the upside. I mean, our expectation is that in, in the aggregate, you know, earnings could be up 20 to 22 percent, uh, which is a lot. And it's not just driven by the tax cuts. So it's a very strong period of time for, for U.S. corporations. And, and, and yet U.S. stocks are not moving. You know, to your point earlier, when we say there hasn't been a lot of impact in the U.S., what would U.S. stocks be? You know, if the trade situation, you know, was not as significant as it is, and they may be, you know, 10 percent higher than they are now. Mm. So I would argue that the impact is pretty significant. Ah, so you think that we, we could see uh, a, a real reaction once we get some deals done, and if we don't get a deal done, same thing right, on the other we're, side. Right, we're, we're seeing exactly correct. In the yeah. U.S., if, if, a trans, if a series of transactions get done, but especially with China and with, uh, with, uh, with NAFTA, then you would see the markets, I think, pop to the upside. Similarly, if we go to a full-blown trade war with China and, and, and we're talking $500 billion in tariffs now, that would have a very deleterious effect here, potentially, and, and further bad effects elsewhere. Where do you see the opportunity around the world right now? Right. So if you look at, let's just say, Europe and the discount Europe is trading to the United States, you know, we're probably at 17 times forward earnings. Europe is at 13 and a half times. European stocks have an average dividend of almost 4 percent, you know, and European companies are, are going to do better than people expect. So we like that. Uh, same is true with China. Right now, China is extremely cheap. It's a market that's trading itself under book value. It's trading at under 11 times forward earnings. It's an attractive market. It's an area actually where we want our clients to go overweight. And then emerging markets, which were cheap before, are actually a little bit cheaper now, given what's gone on in the world. Clients should be exposed there. And the reason is because economic, you know, economic cycles obviously are taking place at different times. The U.S. is late in its cycle, whereas, of course, you know, the emerging markets and, and uh, uh, 
you know, and, and Europe are, are actually less well advanced in their economic cycles. So it doesn't bother you in terms of China that they are stealing our intellectual property, that they, we are on the doorstep of this fight that, that the two countries are having over trade? You, you, you want more exposure to China. Right. We, as, as, as an investor, you do. And that's the weird thing. Of course, you know, I'm not in favor and, and we're not in favor of, of intellectual property theft. Right. And we think that that's the area that, that trade should be, fo trade, you know, renegotiation should be focused on. But when you look at it as an investor and you're thinking out five or ten years, uh, you know, wealthy clients around the world want to basically build a portfolio. China today represents, you know, 20 percent of the economy and 0.3 percent of the world equity indices that MSCI just changed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we know if you look out over five or ten years, you're going to want to have 10 percent, 15 percent of your equity portfolio in China. And the average client today has very little. David, it's great to have you on the program. Thanks so much. Thanks you very much, Maria. Pleasure we, to be here. We appreciate you joining us. David Balin from City Private Bank.